Zoe, welcome to our pre-show this morning. I'm Nate. I'm Hannah. And we're so glad you could join us wherever you're joining us from around the world. How cool is this? We have people joining us uh, today already from uh, South Africa. People Stop. joining us from Indonesia. People joining Amazing. us from the East Coast. People joining us from one mile down the street. The Valley. Yeah, the Valley. We want to yeah. know where you're joining us from. And whether you're on Instagram, Facebook, or you're joining us here on YouTube, make sure and press that follow or that subscribe. And this is what we know. We know God's already going to encourage you today. You might as well share the link as well. Yeah, it's so easy to share the link. You can text it, a good old Facebook status. Can't yeah. forget about that. I've been printing out QR codes and mailing them. Stop. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But I love it. Yeah, you can do that too. Just get it. You got to get ahead of that one. Yeah, you got to get Yeah. yeah. I, I'm already sending out August mail, yes. uh, just uh, you know, for my friends around the world. <laughs> kidding, kind of kidding, kind of kidding. But um, oh my yeah, we're, we're just so excited, and we think you should press the notification button as well, because we're putting out content not just here on Sundays going live, yeah. but all throughout the week. How cool is this? We dropped our brand new Zoe music song, which is incredible. Like it's literally played on repeat. Yes. Um, my wife got mad at me because I turned the bass up all the way in our car, and it just shakes everything. And my kids think it's yeah. the coolest thing, yeah. but it's on repeat. Go check out Zoe Music, but press the notification. Are, are, are you like me? Like I'm, oh, I need like all the alarms. All the all, alarms. Yes. I need the alarm for the alarm. The how many, how many alarms, alarms do you have for when you wake up in the morning? <laughs> just one. <laughs> yeah, me too. I just have one alarm too. Yeah, just one. I have an alarm, just one alarm for my other alarms that I would use to how wake up. How many does it take you? Two, three? It, for two. Real? Two. Okay, two's not bad. Yeah. I have like a wake up and then like, okay, time to get up. Do you have like an encouraging message on your alarm? No, but uh, I do have a third alarm that's like, get up get now, up. emergency. Like all, yeah. yes. Yeah, all I it. like that. And so maybe that's the alarm that you just woke up to, to join us for service today. We're glad you're here. Hey, we have a few exciting things coming up in our church, uh, but actually yesterday we had a really exciting event. We did something called I Love My City. Yeah, and what I Love My City is, it's just once a month, we go out and we love on the city of Los Angeles. So we live in the best city in the entire world. That's right, yes. And so we want to get to know our city. We want to get to know our community. And so yesterday we met at the ministry center and then we did multiple outreaches. They did, they made lunches and we sent them out and we gave them out in Venice on the boardwalk. We also did clean up around Highland Park. If you don't know, we bought a building in yes. Highland Park and it is so exciting. And we just want to get to know that community, get to know the people around there. And so we had a team that went out and did some cleanup around Highland Park. And then last but not least, we did our Zoe Market, which is incredible. And I just think, I was telling Nate earlier, I just think it's so cool to see all these people who line up for the Zoe Market and they come every month and they know each other. And it's almost like it's built its own community in the community within, which is so cool to see and such a fun thing to be a part of. Absolutely. Hey, we want to encourage you. We think Los Angeles is the greatest city in the world because we live here. And we hope that wherever you live, yeah. it feels like the greatest city in the world to you. And so maybe this next month as we do I Love My City, pray and ask God how you can serve the city that you're joining us from. Maybe you're in Phoenix or maybe you're in somewhere in Pennsylvania. I love that. We have some people in Delaware that are joining us. Maybe ask God, how can I serve my community? How can I lean in or, or how can I pray for Zoe all the way here in Los Angeles? But we, we decided a long time ago, when we first launched Zoe, that we were not going to be a church that waits for people to come to us. We were going to be a church that was committed to going into our communities. And so that's why we do I Love My City. And that's why we do something else called connect groups as well. It, because we're the larger our church gets, the more committed we are to making it to feel smaller yeah. and smaller and more personal and personal. And so we do something called connect groups here. That's a fancy way to say we have small groups here in Zoe. Yes, yes, yes. Connect groups are meeting this week. It's the last week of the current Connect Group season. And just because it's the last week, let us encourage you that doesn't mean it's too late to join a Connect. Also, the last Connect group, I feel like is a party Connect. It's, yeah. You get ice cream, you have a game night, you do all the things. It's so much fun. So make sure you check out zoechurch.org slash Connect Groups and you can find a Connect group, whether it's near you in person or we have six Connect groups that meet on Zoom. And so we just believe that there's a connect group for you. That's and right. don't miss it. Don't miss the last week this week. Absolutely. Maybe this is your last connect group of the season, or maybe this is your first connect group ever. All it takes is one connect group to meet your potential new best friend, yeah. or I don't know, maybe a, a new couple is on the, who knows what it looks like. But <laughs> this is what I know is that life 
commitment lasts longer in community. Yeah. And so that's why we have connect groups, our commitment to God, our commitment to the church, our commitment to grow in our faith. It lasts longer, it's stirred up when we're in community with each other. Yeah, I love it. And then we also have coming this Wednesday. Yes. We have okay. ZBS. Yes. What does it stand for? ZBS stands for Zoe Bible School. School. Yes. Yes, it's amazing. It's happening at the Ministry Center this Wednesday night, 7.30 p.m. You don't want to miss it. It's free. Yeah, okay, yes. It's free. Yes. But it's going to be, I don't want to scare you away with it, but it's going to be like collegiate level Bible learning. Like, we're, we're going to take the things of God really seriously, and we're going to dive into the scripture. This is what I know is that church is fun and life is fun, but if we don't have a good understanding of what the Bible actually says, it becomes really hard to connect our life and our theology. And so we're really committed this Wednesday to come together as a church and to dive into the word. Pastor Chad is actually gonna be there himself teaching the class. And so I wanna encourage you, maybe bring a Bible, bring a friend. Bring and, your connect group. Yeah, oh, I love that, bring your connect group. I, I love what Pastor Chad's been saying in services. Your row should become yeah, a, circle. a circle. Maybe our chat room should become a circle. Love it. I'm yeah. just, I'm gonna say it right now. We're gonna make it available online. So if you're joining us around the world, 7.30 Pacific Standard Time, join us for Zoe Bible School. Um, our, our Zoe College, yes. we're partnered with Southeastern University. Yes. And one of the things that Southeastern University says, I love this line, is education is discipleship. I love it. And if you want to take your discipleship seriously, your commitment to Jesus seriously, then we've got to take our education seriously. We have to take learning the scripture seriously. I remember growing up, um, do you remember like when you first started reading the Bible? Yeah. Like I was so intimidated and so nervous. I remember opening the Bible and going like, there's a whole book about jobs in here. <laughs> should I, I don't know, should I apply? Yeah, I'm like, wait, so like, is this going to teach me how to have a good wait, did resume? Did you, as a kid, did you do the um, the race to the verse, you know? I it didn't was like Habakkuk 315, and you're like, ah! You try to get I to didn't it? know what Habakkuk was until I was like okay. 15, 16 years old. Okay, okay uh, this is, uh, here's something for you. When I first started reading the Bible, or sorry, when I was like an elementary school kid, I thought, I'm Filipino. Okay, so the, is my husband. The, yep, yep, shout out to the Filipinos shout out. Yep. In, in the chats. I thought the book of Philippians was for you. Was the book of Philippines. Nice yeah. to tell people. <laughs> Stop it. I'm in the Bible. And so that's why you They're need like, to come to Zoe Bible me. School. So you don't say things like that. Crazy things. I love it. Uh, but yeah, Zoe Bible School. Yes. And that's going to be on Wednesday night. But if you're really interested to diving deeper into your education, maybe you want to start your degree, finish your degree. You're looking to jump into a program that you can earn real university credits and also be discipled in the things of God at the same time. We have Zoe College coming up. It's amazing. This fall. You can go to our website, zoechurch.org slash zoecollege to find out everything you need to know to apply for college. But we're doing something we've never done with our school before, okay? Yeah. We're taking our school and we're splitting it into two different programs, okay? We have our traditional program where you move to the greatest city of Los Angeles where it's always sunny and never rainy. This is a backdrop, green screen. Yeah, this is a green screen. It's yeah. not raining. No. Sun rays in the back. Where you move to Los Angeles, you learn from some of the greatest leaders, teachers in the world, right here at Zoe, uh, Zoe Church. And you're getting hands-on ministry experience. And at the same time, you're earning college credits through Southeastern University. But here's the cool part. Zoe College gets an extreme discount on the credits because we're partnered with the church and Southeastern University believes in the local church. And so maybe that's what, that's what you feel called to. You feel called to ministry, make your way on over to Los Angeles, or maybe you're joining us around the country and you just want to continue in your degree or education. We're doing Zoe College Online for the first time ever. That's so and cool. so you can pursue your degree, you can pursue uh, your post-grad as well. We're doing master's programs as well, online, anywhere in the country. You don't have to move here. You still get that same incredible discount on the credits and you get to be a part of the Zoe College community. I love it, that's amazing. And we're actually about to throw it on over to service. So we'll see you after at the post show. Let's go.
always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glory the Lord with me. Let his, let, (laughs) page flip. Glory the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look at him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. Come on, let's continue to worship. We're standing on your promise. Oh, we wait on your Lord. And when I look back, I didn't think that I would make sinking and the shame came like a wave and I just knew I was, was too far gone then you showed up come on we sing and on time God you love the impossible on time God you love
Nothing's too far gone for the all-time God And you always show up Even when I don't believe it And you always show up too late you never give up nothing's too far gone for the on time god and you always show up thank you jesus zoe we are going to sing a new song and it is called who else Essentially what the song is about is how Jesus is worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our adoration. No matter what the circumstance is, it could be a financial hardship or cancer, but he's still worthy of our praise. And so as we sing this, I just encourage us to lift our voices, mean the words that we're saying, because we have a history with God to look back on and we get to say, God, you're good. You've never failed. So let's continue to worship. Thank you, Jesus. I am an instrument of exaltation. I was born to lift the name above all names. You hear the melody of all creation. But there's a song of praise that I can only bring. Who else is worthy? Who else is worthy? There is no one, only you, Jesus. Who else is worthy? Who else is worthy?
we declare this. joining us, our Zoe family. Come on, clap a little bit louder. Welcome them to church. It's great to have you today. I was looking at, uh, right before I walked up, looking at the numbers of the last service, you know, kind of just looking at everything that happened and a lot of people uh, watching online today, obviously because um, LA is the new Seattle. And um, so if you're at home, we understand it's, these are wicked days. It's a wicked and perverse generation that we're living in. Um, no, but we're really grateful whether you're online or in the room. Let's clap and welcome everybody that's come maybe for the first time. We're really gr grateful that you're here. We're calling today Zochella. So a lot of sinners, a lot of unbelievers at Coach. I'm kidding. Uh, we're going to party and have some fun in church. Anybody think church should be fun? Four people. Anybody think church should be fun? I think church should be the, the best thing that you go to. It should be a place that you feel really loved and really welcomed, accepted, but also believed in and championed. And we're just really excited that you're here today. And I gotta admit the worship team is sounding tremendous today. Could we honor the worship team? You guys sound just fantastic. Pauline, Shane, Nadine, thank you for doing such a great job. I was saying Taryn looks like a million bucks over here. Taryn, uh, who is usually, it serves in the night service every Sunday night and is in the back booth running production. But today he's on stage. Stage looks good on Taryn. Clap for Taryn, doing a great job. Hey, why don't you keep your hands clapping and welcome JD and Bailey up to the stage. JD and Bailey are a huge part of our church and uh, I love them so much. They are connect group leaders and they're from Alabama. And uh, God let them get out of Alabama and rescue them to Los Angeles. And um, they are, they said in the last service, nine months married. Come on, clap for JD and Bailey. JD found out last service that he's nine months married. And uh, JD and Bailey, you guys lead a connect group at our church. Thank you so much for your leadership. What's it been like leading a connect group at Zoe? I mean, it's been an amazing experience so far. Coming from Alabama to Los Angeles, didn't have a lot of family and friends, but we really found a place here at Zoe. And one of the reasons why is getting involved with Connect Group and getting to see everybody uh, here and getting to be a part of this community. It's amazing. And what kind of Connect Group uh, do you lead in? How can I make my voice sound as cool as yours? That's a lot of Southern training right there. <laughs> A lot what of butter of, in your biscuits. It's unbelievable. It's mesmerizing. What, what, what kind of connect group do you guys lead? So we actually lead a couple's game night connect. And I'll be honest with y'all, whenever JD first came to me and was like, okay, I want to lead a connect group, I didn't know if we were actually qualified to do it, frankly. But it's been so cool getting to meet new people, getting to actually introduce people to our community that are new to church and even those that have been coming for a long time. Amazing. And do you have a, like any cool stories, something that's happened out of your connect group? Yeah, definitely. We had one couple actually, um, our last season, they were kind of having a hard time finding a church and kind of struggling with their faith. And they showed up to our first session of Connect Group and they were one of the only couples there. Wow. But we got to see them go from dating to engaged 
to now they got married just this Friday. Come on. My God. Do you see what could happen to your life if you join a connect group? My God. There's a couple of guys getting some ideas out there, and I like it. We're so grateful that you guys moved from Alabama to L.A. You're such a huge part of our community. I know you serve at Zoe Kids as well. Bailey, you do a thousand things at Zoe Church. And we're just so grateful that you lead connect groups. Connect groups are such a big deal to Zoe. It's our passion to take these rows and turn them into circles because we just believe life is better together and it's better in community. And so it's people like J.D. and Bailey that make our church so special. Clap for them one more time and thank God for them. Thank you so much for your leadership. And we're pumped because the greatest part of Zoe, even though, though the worship's amazing and uh, the coffee is tremendous, tastes better today, the best part of Zoe really is the people of Zoe. So I'm going to give you a second just to turn around. Give about two or three people a high five. Tell them how good it is to see them on a Sunday at Zoe Church. Show somebody some love in the house today. Welcome Pastor Julia and Rob Show to the somebody stage. some love. Let's go. Right 11.30. Okay. 11.30 service, feeling live and alive. Feeling alive and alive. Chad said Zochella, but I'm saying no cella. Oh, okay. Uh, I maybe like that. that's because I'm in my 40s, but um, <laughs> there's going to be no cella for us today. Yes, uh, You are holding something in your hand. I am yes. holding a yes. very yes. bright flex, flex red. Flex on them. You know, just, just <laughs> yes. go ahead. No, just see, <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing a very bright, or sorry, I'm not wearing, I am showing you a very bright red card that you might also see on the seat back in front of you. And you should scan this QR code if you want to know the top four things going on in the life of Zoe Church. The top four things, they will be emailed to you. So scan this QR code. I always say this is the one time in church that you can pull out your phone. So pull out your phone, scan this QR code, and uh, cannot wait to get you involved. I love that. And as they mentioned, connect groups are some of the best thing that we have going yeah. on here in our community. And we're finishing up season one of our connect groups. And so jump in for that last week and find out more information by scanning that QR on the back of your chair on how you can get involved or even potentially lead like JD and Bailey for season two. Yes, and you should also jump into culture class. If you wanna come serve with us on the Zoe Serve team, we always say it's the best team in all of the world, the ZS. You should jump on team. Join us for culture class after this service right across the courtyard. We have lunch available, by the way, Pastor Julia. There is lunch available at culture class. Do you, do you know what they're serving today? I don't know what they're serving. I have heard in the past that they've had some legendary lunches, and maybe that's because I'm just a legendary eater. But um, <laughs> there is food. Uh, it's a way that you can find out more information about us or how you can get involved here. Once again, scan that QR code. Something we also have this week I'm so excited about ZBS Zoe Bible School happening on our west side at our ministry center 7 30 p.m. theology classes Chad is teaching uh, Wednesday night so check out this video for more information about ZBS coming up Pastor Chad and Pastor Julia and Zoe Church, thank you for your amazing generosity. We're standing here in Kenya, Africa, where we've been able to spend some time this week with our local program team and watch firsthand the work that they're doing to not only train farmers and empower women and feed children, but to see stories like Sophie, where she's able to start her business out of nothing and not only gain her own dignity back, but help people in her community as well. You make that possible. 
Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your, your giving. And thank you for being a part of this mission we call Convoy of Hope. Come on, let's clap and thank God for that. Isn't that awesome? And um, hey, we are now live linked with our West Side location. Clap and welcome. West Side is joining us. Come on, we're the hostess. Come on, Miguel, clap with us. We are so grateful to have everybody over there in Santa Monica. I was watching Side Stage. It's a packed room there at the West Side, and we love you. We're all together now. Our Zoe family, our West Side, our Miguel, we make up Zoe Church. And I just got to say, I'm so grateful for our church. Do you love our church? I love our church so much. It's more than the merch for me. I love our church so much, and uh, I just got to tell you, we're so grateful. We have seen God do such great things. In fact, this uh, Saturday, yesterday, we had a huge team. Once a month, we do a thing at Zoe called I Love My City. And uh, yesterday, we had people that were doing all kinds of outreaches. I know there's a lot of the nation that's bashing L.A. and making comments about L.A., but we've decided at our church to serve our city, love our city, bless our city, help our city. So can we clap for everybody that was serving at I Love My City yesterday? And then the day before that, Friday night, we had our middle school movement night. Bunch of middle schoolers there uh, meeting together, had a massive service, and it was very godly. Smelt like sin, but it was godly. And so thank God for our middle school. Uh, if you're called to middle school ministry, God bless you. And, uh, and then uh, you saw it, we released music. Come on, anybody like that new song with me? Pretty awesome. And just so many uh, great things. And I was gone last Sunday, um, but I want to just take a moment and celebrate. As a church, over we uh, Easter weekend, 3,000 people came to church here at Zoe Church. And we're very, come on, clap. That's pretty awesome. And almost 100 people, nearly 100 people said yes to Jesus. And so we're just really grateful for all that God has done in our church. What I'm trying to say to you is we're winning. We are winning together. We're winning and we're building something great that God can use in LA on the east side, the west side, and all around the world. And it's really because of your generosity. I want to thank every person that gives at our church. And uh, if you would like to give, you can uh, scan the QR code in front of you or text Zoe, Z O E, to 77977. It'll shoot you a link or go to our website. But all of this is possible because of your generosity, because of your your faithful giving. We've got a bunch of faithful givers here in our church. And I just want to say thank you. And by the way, at Zoe, we never ask you for money. I will never ask you for money. But I will unapologetically ask you to ask God what you should give. And so talk to God about your giving. Ask him, Lord, do you want me to give? How much do you want me to give? Pray about it. And then just be faithful and obedient to whatever God says. Amen. But we got a bunch of people that have asked God and been faithful to give. And that's why we're a blessed church. So clap one more time for everybody that gives faithfully at our church. All right. Go there in your Bible. Turn to Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. We are in a brand new series. And we are actually talking together about our values at Zoe Church. Um, I didn't get to kick off uh, last week, but here in Miguel, the great Chad Narayan preached last Sunday. Chad Narayan shut it down. And in fact, I was in Alabama this last week. I spent three days in Alabama uh, this last week, and there was a guy that came up to me in Alabama, and he said, man, I went to your church last Sunday, and you weren't there. And he said, I was on vacation in San Diego, and I drove up two hours to hear you preach in person, and you weren't there. And I was like, I'm so sorry. But in my head, I wasn't sorry because it's nice to have a Sunday off. <laughs> and so I was like, I'm so sorry. He's like, but the other Chad shut it down. So clap one more time for Chad and Ryan doing a great job. <laughs> We're talking together really about being clear and clean and being confident and I think that always comes when you're living a life that has good values. You know, you got to have values that drive your life, principles that drive your life. In fact, I, I, I encourage you to write this down in your phone. Write down, you need vision, values, and standards to live a great life. Vision comes from God. What am I supposed to do? Values from his word. What God values, I value. And standards. 
In other words, we don't try and lower God's word to fit my life. I lift my life up to live by his standards. So you need vision, you need values. What was the third one you need? Oh, you need standards to do really well. Vision, values, and standards. So we're talking for the next few weeks about some values at Zoe, 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 Zoe Church. And these are values of ours. And I'm going to preach to you about one of my favorite subjects in the whole world today. It's a big value around here. I want to talk to you today about the value of excellence. Man, do I love talking about excellence. And I'm excited to talk to you about excellence because we serve an excellent God. And I just believe that the more you worship God, the more you become like God. Remember in your life, whatever you exalt, whatever you follow, whatever you worship, you become. You be, you're becoming what you worship. When I was in high school, I fell in love with the game of basketball, and, I, and I, I followed, I worshiped a guy named Michael Jordan, number 23. So whenever my mom asked me to do chores, I did it with my tongue out, <sighs> you know, because I became like Michael Jordan. So, you know, just because whatever you worship, you become. To develop excellence, all that you have to do is worship God, and you will develop, and you will become more like him. So I want to talk to you today, write down the title. It's called A Spirit of Excellence Changes Everything. I want to, I want to encourage you because I, I believe that if you could develop this spirit, it will change everything in your life. All that you're missing for some of us is an excellent spirit, and that will change the trajectory of your life. Daniel in the Bible, Daniel had an excellent spirit. And watch what happened to Daniel. Daniel chapter 6, verse 1. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be over the whole kingdom. And over these there were three governors of whom Daniel was one. So there was DeSantis, there was Newsom, and Daniel. Daniel was one of the three governors. I liked it. It felt clever to me. He was one of three and that, they, that the satraps might give account to them so that the king would suffer no loss. Then this Daniel, watch this word, I loved it, distinguished himself above all the other governors and the satraps. Why? Because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. So the governors and satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find no charge or fault because he was faithful, nor was there any error or fault in him. Then these men said, we shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. In other words, they say, this guy is squeaky clean. This guy has an excellent spirit, lives an excellent life, and serves an... The only thing we can pin him on is his faith because he lives at a higher standard. I'm excited because I believe as a church, God is calling us to a higher standard. And the only way we can get to his standard is by having his values. I'll, I'll never forget when I was 22 years old, I was a youth pastor in East L.A., and I grew up in a denomination called Foursquare. It's a huge tribe of a lot of churches. And in, in my district that I was in when I was 22, they appointed me over all the summer camps and winter camps. So I was over the summer camps and winter camps when I was 22 years old. And so they put me over uh, the, the, the winter camps, and the first one I was running, I was, I was just starting in the ministry and I was over, you know, 600 high schoolers are going up to Big Bear for winter camp. Shout out to anybody love Big Bear. I, I love to visit there. I would never live there. Anyways, but, but so I was up at, going up to Big Bear, and it was the first one I was running, so I wanted to be really good. So I'm, I'll never forget, I went into the auditorium, and I, by myself, I went through and I made sure every chair was neatly connected. Yeah, I'm just telling you, you, know, you don't know how to build church unless you know how to stack chairs and organize chairs. Why do you think my eye twitches? So I got, the, I got every chair just perfectly dialed for 600 high schoolers to come in this room. And I got the lighting guy. We got the lights right. And then the worship team was rehearsing. And 600 high schoolers were coming up the mountain to, to, to experience winter camp in Big Bear. And I'll never forget, they, 
they were smart enough to put a boss over me. You know, there's an older guy that had been doing this a long time. So when the boss of the camps walked into the room, I'll never forget, he walks in, everything's set. He walks in and he jumps back. He goes, whoa. He goes, I can feel the excellence in this room. And when he said it, I was like, I don't know. I don't know what I did. I just, I was so excited. It's the first time that I kind of was complimented about being OCD. <laughs> it's the first time that I've, I, that someone kind of put language to what I valued. I value organization. I've, I was raised, I was raised to keep my room clean, to keep things in order. You know that old saying, uh, cleanliness is next to godliness? I believe that was a scripture when I was growing up. That get everything in order. Get everything excellent. Oh, I just love this. God wants to teach you how to live an excellent life. Look at 2 Peter chapter 1. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and to his own excellence. God has called you to live at his level. God has called you to become like him. He is excellent, so we are excellent. We are a reflection of God's love. We are a reflection of God's grace. And by the way, the more that you receive God's love and God washes over you and God heals your life, you will start to become not what your parents did to you, not what some ex did to you, you, you will become what God is doing to you. I appreciate the clap right over here. That's my guy right there. That's a planted clapper. And so God has given you everything that, that pertains to life and godliness, and he will develop excellence within you. That's why the love of God is poured out into our lives so we can become excellent. We become excellent because God is excellent and we become whatever we worship. You understand? I just love this definition because you got to understand what excellence is. Excellence is the quality of being outstanding or extremely good. Distinction, quality, superiority, brilliance, greatness, merit, caliber, mastery, the characteristics of excellence or an excellent spirit, watch this list. It means you have great character, integrity, honesty, compassion. You're humble, teachable, ever learning, great work habits, dependable. You love the Lakers, meekness, consistent, hate the Clippers, confident, determination, diligence, adaptability, persistent, goal-oriented, enthusiastic, forgiving, self-disciplined, reliable, a good steward, generous, grateful, bold, positive attitude attitude, faithful, hopeful, surrendered to God, and Christ-like. You, do, you, do you read that list and just go, help me, Jesus? Right? Because by the way, God, he will develop all of those qualities in you. It is a byproduct of worshiping God. It's a byproduct of serving a good Jesus. And, and, and watch this. The opposite of excellence is mediocre. Mediocre is average, ordinary, moderate, not very good, middle of the road, uninspired, undistinguished, indifferent, unexceptional. The Dallas Cowboys, unexciting. Un I'm kidding. I'm going to stop making fun of the Dallas Cowboys. The Lord rebuked me for it. Unremarkable, run of the mill. Watch this. Mediocre or average is being the best of the worst or the worst of the best. And some of you, you've been so stuck in living a mediocre life, you're satisfied with being the best of the worst. He goes, well, it's not as bad as them. And that, listen, God, when you get to heaven, is not going to say, you know what, you, you did better than them. God will hold you accountable for what he put into your hand. God will judge you based upon what you did and didn't do with his son. And so we want to become excellent because it's a reflection of an excellent, awesome God. Not so we can brag, look at what, what we've got, look at who we are. Look, I became a governor. I'm over, I got an excellent spirit. The chairs are organized. Ah. That's, not what, that's not what it's about. It's, it's, our goal is to reflect how magnificent and brilliant and awesome and good and loving and kind our God is. You understand? So a, 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 an excellent spirit will change so much of your life. 
I'm going to give you four things to write down today. Write down number one. Develop an excellent spirit in every area of your life. In every area of your life, strive to be excellent. Strive, not for greatness, for excellence. Strive for excellence. And I like this because God cares about every nook and cranny of your life. The devil's not into the details. God is into the details. So, so God cares about your physical life. He cares about your financial life. He cares about your emotions. He cares about your relationships. He cares about you, your spiritual life. God cares about it. So there's not anybody here that can say, you know, I, well, I'm killing it in this area, then I'm losing in this area, but God is happy. No, God wants you to excel, to increase, to prosper in every area of your life. Now, I don't know about you, but is there an area of your life or two that you would love to get better at? Let me just see your hand. If you love, lift them all, all the way. West side, lift them up. If you, if you don't got your hand up, you might go to H-E-L-L. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I only did one L, so you don't know where you're going. Anyways, Someone's like, is he serious? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going to do it four more times, I promise. So, so if, if you, this is the problem about having kids. Because, you know, like I get up early in the morning and I read my Bible and I drink my coffee and I feel so holy and spiritual. And Julia, she comes out of the kitchen and I kiss her on the cheek. And, you know, and I say, good, good, good morning, my queen. And, you know, and, and, and I feel all good. And I feel like I'm killing it. And I'm, you know, going to work out today. And physically, I feel all good. And then I go to drive my boys to school. And I open the doors to our, our van. Sin. McDonald's everywhere. Crumbs everywhere. Deviant behavior. Deceitfulness. Sin. Demons. That fast. I'm that low. So if you feel like, man, I'm not excellent because I, I, I have a few areas of my life that aren't good, welcome to the club. All of us are under, and I love God. The Bible says, he who has begun a good work will be faithful to complete that work. God's not done with you yet. He is still chiseling, refining developing and the more you worship God the more you receive his love you develop an excellent spirit watch what Paul says to Timothy he says almighty man of God but you man of God flee these things and pursue righteousness godliness faith love patience gentleness you're, I'm leaving my old life, and in my old life, I wasn't good with my money, and I wasn't good with my mouth, and I wasn't good with my emotions, but now that I follow a good, excellent, awesome God, God is talking to me about how I handle my money. He's talking to me about my entertainment. He's talking to me about my moral standards. He's discussing to me about my spiritual life. I want to become excellent in every area of my life. In fact, Paul says to Timothy, hey, I know you're young, but don't let your age ain't nothing but a number. Don't let your age define your excellence. He says you set the standard, the gold standard in your faith, your love, your speech, your purity. You develop excellence in every area of your life. I'm just telling you today, people in your cul-de-sac, people in your apartment building, people in your neighborhood, people at your workplace are looking, what does a Christian look like today? And if you keep compromising and letting the standard be low and you don't value excellence, people are going to think we don't serve an excellent God. But I reflect the glory of an awesome God. It's not about me. It's all about him. He is good. Therefore, he develops good things into my life. And come on, West Side, clap with us. This is who God is. And so that's who we are. God always calls you to be like him. He says, be holy because I'm holy. Why am I generous? Because God's generous. Why am I called to live in kindness? Because God is kind. Develop excellence in every area of your life. I love this proverb. Look at Proverbs 12, verse 4. An excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who causes shame is like rottenness in his bones. Let's play law of opposite, even for a husband. 
someone that walks in excellence, the spouse is so proud. It's like a crown of glory, a, cl- a crown of honor. Look at who my spouse is. But someone that lives with deviant or duplistic tendencies and doesn't walk in the fear of God and doesn't serve God, it's like rottenness to the bones. So excellence impacts our life and our relationships. And so we've got to develop an excellent spirit. It takes time. The more I'm with God, the more I become like God. I start talking like God. I start acting like God. I start seeing the world the way God sees the world. I start seeing my money the way God sees money. I become like God the more I praise him. That's why you got to get to church on Sundays. It's not just about coming to a building. It's about getting into his presence. And the more I worship God, all of a sudden, all the old stuff goes away. I stop, I flee my old ways, and I pursue a new way. And don't you think for one minute that God doesn't care about every area of your life. God, God cares about your, your physical life. Let me just see your hand. If you'd love to be better with your diet... And your exercise, let me just see your hand. Amen. We are all sinners saved by grace. We just got back from spring break, and when I walked back in my house, I told my wife, I think I gained five pounds. I don't regret any of them because the tacos were fantastic, but I got to get it back in order. And maybe something in your life is out of order. You got to bring it back under the feet of Jesus and surrender and submit to God's ways, His values. And whenever you do that, watch what happens. Whenever you do that, wherever you, write down number two, wherever you find excellence, you will find God's favor. Favor follows excellence. So if you want God's favor on your life, wouldn't you love to have favor on your business? How about favor over your family? Favor over your name. Whenever you have excellence, you will find God's favor because God's drawn to it. He's attracted to it. Remember, when when he found someone that walked in excellence, he said, take from the lazy guy who's a bad steward and doesn't live in excellence, take it from him and give it to the guy that does steward well. He's drawn to this kind of stuff. Look at this scripture. I love this. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Whatever you do, even if it's organizing chairs, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. In other words, when you go to your job, you are not working for your employer, you are working for God. When you work hard, it's not that your boss sees it or your coworker sees it, it's that the Lord sees it. Everything you do, do it wholeheartedly as unto the Lord. In other words, if you've been mailing it in, knock it off. Do it for God's glory, not for man's glory. Even if you get someone's praise, it won't be like getting the favor that comes from God. God is watching your life. He is watching your stewardship. He is watching what you do in the dark times and the bright times. And when God sees someone he can trust, when he sees someone that will be organized and excellent, when he sees someone that will reflect his value, God will bless your socks off. God will bless you beyond your wildest dreams because he sees how hard you work. He says, don't do it for eye service. Who cares if they see it? Wow, Rick, what a great job. Rick. I don't know why. If you go to our church and your name is Rick, I'm so sorry. It's just such a fun name to have fun with. It, 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 even if your boss or your coworkers applaud and they go, wow, no one works harder, it doesn't mean as much as if it comes from the Lord. And he's, it says everything you do, do it with all your heart, all your strength. Because God has put you in that job. God has put you with those people. Uh, this is much more sovereign than you can imagine. And so we want to develop a spirit of excellence as we worship God. And, and as we do that, we'll watch God's favor, his partnership, show up in our lives. I love this. Look at this next scripture. This is beautiful. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 33. For God is not a God of disorder, but a God of peace. As in all the meetings of God's holy people. people. God is not a God of chaos. So if you've got a life that's low standards and chaos and you got all this, you didn't do that and you're just a mess of a life. How could God bless that? How could his favor rest on that? But if you want God's best in your life, do your best with what you have. 
Dad, don't compare it with what other people have. Comparison is the thief of joy. I, what you have, God bless you. I love that you got that. But for me, this is what I got. I got a minivan with french fries. Right? So I'm going to do my best with what God's given me. And whenever you see order, whenever you see, another word for order, organization, excellence, whenever you see order, God is there. He's drawn to it. He is God of order, not a God of chaos. Now, again, I got three boys, and in my house, these boys are wild. They're wild and out like Nick Cannon. These kids are crazy, and these boys are wild. They're good, wild. And I love it for the most part, but there's a, I have a limit, okay? Like, you could tell Alexa to play a song. I just don't want Alexa at full volume. And so I got a limit with these children. I, got, I love them in increments. I love them in spaces. Anyway, and so sometimes they get too wild for me, and I'll say, I'll shut down Alexa, and I'll say, hey, come here. Hey, woo, woo, come here. Hey, I do not want, what, what is the word? Chaos. I do not want chaos in my house, but what do I want? Peace. Yes, I do not like chaos. I want peace. This is them. They know. They know that in my house, I want peace. I want order. So sometimes I send them their bed for 15 minutes just because I need to get the order back in Jesus' name. But the reality is, is that maybe there's some things in your life that are out of order. Maybe it's in the physical or the spiritual or the relational, maybe the emotions, whatever it is, we're all under construction. We all have things the Holy Spirit is to stop ignoring the voice of the Holy Spirit in your life. You ever have the Holy Spirit start talking to you about something and the Holy Spirit's just kind of like, hey, hey, hey. That's the Holy Spirit saying, let's deal with this. Let's get this in order so I can put my favor on your life. Wherever you see that, you see God just, he'll bless you. He'll work with it. He's drawn to it because you're reflecting him. God loves you no matter what. God loves you no matter what. He loves you no matter what. Anybody grateful for that? He loves you no matter what. But he's drawn to where there's, where there's order. So to the best of my ability, I'm developing, to the best of my ability, I'm developing an excellent spirit because that's, that's God's character and God's nature. And as I work on the areas of my life that are under construction before him and I do my best, I do everything wholeheartedly as under the Lord, I want to please God. Don't you want to please God? I want to please God with my efforts, with my attitude. I want to tell you the thing that will mess you up the most in the spirit of excellence. Write down number three. The enemy of excellence is offense. The enemy of excellence is offense. The moment you allow offense in your life, excellence vanishes from your life. You cannot be excellent and be offended. This is the tactic of the enemy. The enemy always works in offense to zap the spirit. Because remember, it's a spirit. This Daniel distinguished himself because he had an excellent what? Spirit. So it's a spirit. But so the moment you take on offenses and you accept offenses, that spirit can no longer work in your life. That's why, watch what the scripture says. This is so beautiful. This is Ephesians 4. Don't grieve God. Don't break his heart. His Holy Spirit moving and breathing in you is the most intimate part of your life. Did you? Let me read that again. The His Spirit moving and breathing in you is the most intimate part of your life, making you fit for Himself. Don't take such a gift for granted. Make a clean break with all cutting, backbiting, profane talk. Be gentle with one another, sensitive, forgiving one another as quickly and as thoroughly as God in Christ forgave you. So when you have an excellent spirit, you're quick to forgive. Because you know if I don't forgive, it's going to crease my spirit. It's going gonna, it's gonna to mess with my spirit, which will mess with my attitude. And so i got to forgive fast. You ever meet somebody that it takes them like three years to forgive somebody? Or, you, or it takes them some 30 years. That's why people on their dying bed, they start confessing, oh, I'm so sorry when we were 13 and you stole Sally. I hated you until now. And that, now they got one minute left to have friendship. <laughs> Whole minute, 60 seconds. I ah, know, sorry. 
You keep delaying that forgiveness, it's messing with more than the relationship. It's messing with every area of your life because every area of your life just lowered its standard and lowered its value and lost its vision. But the more I be as quick to forgive, how quick does Jesus forgive you? Jesus has already forgiven your past, present, and future sins. That's how fast God forgives you. Even while you're in the act of sin, God's shouting, I forgive you. Jesus is on the cross. Father, forgive them. They don't even know. They're not even asking forgiveness. Jesus already forgave you. So you ought to make a premeditated decision. When people abandon me, if people abuse me, if people betray me, if people run out on me, if people backbite me, gossip about me, I already forgive you. I forgive you in advance. I forgive you in advance. You got a loan in advance. And the loan is I forgive you. Why? Because I cannot let this spirit get creased. I cannot let what God's doing in my life be taken for granted. I'm doing everything I can to serve God, follow God, worship God, become like God. And I'm not letting you and your lower standards mess with my future. Come on, clap if you believe that. Westside, clap with us. This is our value. Don't be offended. Watch what Proverbs 18, 19 says. A brother offended or a sister offended is harder to win over than a strong city. People that get offended, you try and get them to come over to your house. They're not coming over to your house. You can't even get a text back, a call back, a FaceTime back. FaceTime and calling, to, they're offended. And so they're harder to win over than a fortified city. Let me just tell you what is synonymous with an excellent spirit is a winning spirit which means I have not been abused or abandoned. You don't have control over the narrative over my life. God is the author and the finisher of my life. And I will walk in an excellent spirit. I will not be offended. I will every day say, this is my daily bread. I will forgive those as you forgive me. Amen to that. And when you walk, when you do that, you just better buckle up because God's favor will just rest on you. God's goodness will rest on you. Because you're becoming more like Jesus. What is, what, is the, what is the signature move of Jesus on the cross? He didn't prove. He didn't have anything to prove. He didn't try and take matters into his own hands. He was just shouting forgiveness. The enemy of excellence is, is offense. And so the easy answer is don't be offended. Amen? And so, so number one, every area of your life, develop an excellent spirit. Number two, this is so big, whenever you walk in excellence, you'll find God's favor. Number three, the enemy of excellence is offense. Write down the last one, worship team. You come join me. I love this one so much. This is not a head thing. This is a heart thing. And so we are motivated by love, the love of Jesus. This is not about what you know about excellence. Oh, yeah, I read a book on leadership, so I understand excellence. It's not about what you know here. It's about what God is doing here. Because it's a spirit. It's not info. It's not about head knowledge, it's about heart knowledge. I know who God is. I know what God says. I know what God's about. And so I want to become excellent, not because, so I can just walk around and be like, am I not excellent? (laughs) It's not about here, it's about here. And God That's why I'm just telling you, how do you develop an excellent spirit? Worship God. Allow God to love you and heal you and restore you and put you back together. An excellent spirit is a byproduct of being with Jesus. The more I worship Jesus, I will become like Jesus. And in his presence, he starts to work on the areas of my life that are Bandaged, bruised, in process. You'll develop that spirit because that's the Holy Spirit. The fruit, by the way, the fruit, Galatians 5, 22. The fruit of the spirit, the result of walking with Jesus is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control, and faithfulness. It doesn't say fruits. You don't get like one or five of them. You get all of them when you walk with Jesus. All of them. You get all of them. Because it's the result of being in relationship with God. Amen? So it's not about what you know here. It's about what God is doing right here. I was telling somebody in Alabama that I'm preaching on excellence today. And they were telling me, 
that when they were in college, they, they were a business major and they had to do a research paper on what causes a returning customer. Anybody can get a one-time sale, but what is it that will predict the behavior of a returning customer? And in all their research, they discovered that the number one reason for a returning customer, it was not proximity to their home. It was not uh, even quality of product or price point or, you know, fill in the blank for what you'd expect. It was comfort. Comfort. Because when there's excellence... You're just totally comfortable. That's why when you get into God's presence, you're comfortable. And you get around God and you're like, oh, that's what my soul has been longing for. That's why when I get around God, the peace I've been looking for and the joy I've been trying to find, oh, I'm founding it in the presence of God because he's an excellent God. That's why when people get around you, they're going to sense there's something about you. you got a different spirit. you got a different attitude. What Do you meditate? Do you do yoga? Your vibes are crazy. Your energy is wild. It's not energy. It's not vibes. It's God's spirit. It's not about what I know about excellence. I could teach you about how to be excellent in customer service. It's about the Holy Spirit working in you, changing you, molding you, shaping you, healing you. It's not about what you know in your head. It's a heart thing. So we are motivated by love. We are motivated by loving, loving God and loving people. This is our motivation, to love the Lord my God with all my heart, all my soul, and all my strength, and somehow through His Spirit, loving my neighbor as my what? As myself, that's my goal. My, I'm, my goal is not to flex. My goal is not to be excellent so I could walk around and go, oh, look at my physical fitness. Y'all already know I skipped leg day. You just knew that when I started getting up. It's not about a flex. Financially, look how much money I have. Look at my spirituality. Look at all my friends. This is not a motivation to say to the world, I have an excellent spirit. It is motivated to say, I serve an excellent God. I serve the God of Abraham. I serve the God of Isaac. I serve the God of Jacob, the God that was, the God that is, the God that is to come. I'm in relationship with that guy, and that guy is under construction in my life. He is helping me and molding me and shaping my life. He is under construction, and we will have a talk later about excellence. Clap for Josh. He's such a... Were you trying to go like Dodger Stadium or something? Do you play organ for the Dodgers? My God, some guys want all the attention. It's just embarrassing the mediocre behavior of our. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Clap for Josh one more time. He's such a. He's a saint. He'd be. He's mortified right now wants or needs no attention. I'm so sorry that happened. Let's talk later though. What I'm, what I'm, what I'm trying to say to you is what, I, what I'm, I'm not asking you to do is become excellent so you can draw attention to yourself. It would, it would break my heart if you were motivated to become excellent so you could be like one of the three governors and everybody goes, that guy's the brightest of the bunch. That's culture to me. Culture is obsessed with their own image. Our world worships their own image. Look at how beautiful I am. Look at how awesome I've become. Look at how great and glorious my life is. An excellent spirit is a mirror that bounces back to God that says, you are awesome. You are good. And so I am just a reflection of your forgiveness and your grace and your faithfulness in my life. Amen. That's why the scripture says it twice. It doubles down two times. It says it twice. Not to us be the glory. Then it doubles down. Not to us. I think it's saying it twice so that we kind of get it in our soul and our spirit. Don't you try and share glory with God. 
God is so big, he shares his glory with no man. He says, I am big enough on my own. But uh, let me tell you something, son and daughter. If you start hanging out with me and worshiping me, you will inevitably start talking like me and, and handling your life like me because I'm a God changer. I change my children into the image of the son. Amen. Stand to your feet. Westside, stay with us just for a moment. I want to read this definition of excellence about God. Excellence describes the nature and the character of something. Excellence, let me read it again, describes the nature and the character of something. The very nature and character of God show us what is good and it shows us what is perfect and it shows us what is holy and it shows us what is excellent. Excellence describes the character and the nature of God. So when I understand excellence is showing me what is pure and the level of purity, what purity looks like and what holiness is and what excellence truly is. As I gaze upon his beauty, as I view his majesty, as I look upon his glory, I see, ah, that's what excellence looks like. It's not Nordstrom or Amazon or some company that you're thinking of. It's not some guru leadership. It's not somebody on YouTube talking about diets and meditation. It's God. God is the standard of excellence. And so I say that we do everything we can to get all the offenses and distractions and failure and disappointment out of the way so we can behold how good and awesome our God is today. Amen. Come on, can we clap and thank God for his grace? Come on, let's pray today. Father, we thank you today for your grace. We thank you for your love in our life. And we thank you that, God, you showed up at just the right time for us when we were sinners, when we were away from you, when we were lost. And thank you that as we gaze upon your beauty, as we behold your splendor, as we look into your eyes and as we step into your presence, we know what comfort is and we know what excellence is. It's you. So, God, make us more like you, Jesus. We want to become more and more like Jesus Christ. If that's your prayer and you want to develop a spirit of excellence, lift a hand to heaven right now. Just tell the Lord, Lord, work in me. I want to know you. I want to follow you. I want to serve you. Lord, I thank you for every hand, but I thank you for every heart. We will follow you for all of our days. Thank you that you started a good work, but we believe you're going to finish it. You're going to complete it in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, that you change us from glory to glory into the image of your son in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on, Zoe. If you believe it today, come on, why don't you worship our God?
renew in us a right spirit today. We thank you for this. We thank you for this in the name of Jesus. If there's an area of your life that you need to raise the standard in, there's a bucket, there's a category, there's an area of your life you're saying, Lord, I'm gonna, I hear you today. And I'm going to do everything in my power to raise the standard of living in my life. Let it be excellent. If that's you, lift your hand. Just tell the Lord, Lord, I hear you in that area. Whether it's money, whether it's morals, whether it's standards, whether it's speech, purity, whatever it is. Just tell the Lord, Lord, I will do everything in my power to raise the standard of living. Father, I thank you that right now, God, you are speaking to us about the levels that we're going to live at. And I pray our whole church would go to a whole nother level of following you and knowing you, worshiping you and serving you, God. There's no God like you. No one else will be seated on the throne of our life in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You can put your hands down. If you're here today and you've never said yes to grace, you've never said yes to the love of Jesus, today you want to say yes to his grace, his love, his acceptance, and his forgiveness. When I count to three, if you want to get saved today, put your hope and your trust in a good God. You want to get saved. When I count to three, lift up your hand. Respond to Jesus. Give your life to Jesus. Jesus gave you his life. In response, if you'd like, you can give him your life. If you want to get saved today, when I count to three, lift up your hand. Respond to the gift of grace. One, two, three. Come on, if you want to get saved, lift your hand right now. Just tell the Lord yes. Tell the Lord yes. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Yeah, awesome. Anybody else? Say yes to Jesus. Beautiful. Let's say this out loud. Everybody together. Say it after me. Say, Father God, I say yes to who you are. I will follow you. I will serve you. My life is your life. Come on, let's clap right now for every person that said yes to Jesus today. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. A bunch of people got saved uh, in the last service. A bunch of people today, whether you're online or in the room, we're just thrilled for you. And we think it's the coolest day, maybe in the history of your life, probably in the history of your life. I don't know what's going to beat it. I don't know what's going to beat the day that you got saved. And so we'd love to give you a Bible. There's a free Bible in the courtyard. Grab that in the courtyard. If you um, if you don't want to grab a free Bible, download the Bible app. It's also free. Start reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I think you should come Wednesday night, Zoe Bible School. I'm going to be teaching on how to understand the Bible doing an overview of how to understand scripture. If you're intimidated by the Bible, you should come Wednesday night. RSVP, it's going to be an incredible time and uh, can't wait. Does that sound good? Are you glad you came to church today? Keep clapping and welcome Rob as he comes to close our service. Come on, can we keep putting our hands together if you are encouraged by the word today? Hey, I hope that you are excited that you came to church. Just a couple of quick reminders before you do head out. We do have ZBS this Wednesday, Zoe Bible School. So come hang with us, 7.30 p.m. at the Zoe Ministry Center. And then also after this service, we have culture class. If you want to get involved, join the ZST, the Zoe Serve team. Jump into culture class. And like I said, lunch will be provided. And then also, we are now announcing that we have Zoe Kids Summer Camp on June 24th through the 27th so if you know a kid that is between the ages of 1 and 11 come hang with us it's going to be at the Zoe Ministry Center between those days does that sound good are you glad you came to church today all right well as we always say at Zoe just keep coming we'll see you out in the courtyard and welcome to the Zoe Post Show if you were here for the pre-show I'm Nate I'm Hannah And before we get into anything, if this encouraged you, make sure and send the link to a friend. Uh, Go ahead and press the subscribe button or the follow button. I promise you we're going to be putting out all sorts of new content. We're so thankful, you guys. This is our first Sunday going live on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook all at the same time. So welcome wherever you're joining us from. Just a few quick uh, reminders for you. We already said like a million times during service, but... This is our last week of Connect Groups. Yes, it's the last week of Connect Groups, so it's never too late to join a Connect. So check out the Connects at zoechurch.org slash connect. Connect Groups. Connect Groups. Yes. Got them. And find a Connect Group for you. There's definitely one, whether you want to be in person. There's six online Zoom Connects. There's a Connect Group for you, so make sure you sign up for the last. I feel like last week of Connects, too, is like a party. Yeah, it's a party. You do something fun. 100%. And I loved what J.D. 
and Bailey were saying in their connect group. It's just an opportunity for people to come together, yeah. create friendships, and maybe it ends up like their connect group. Uh, you, you start as friends, and then you become a couple, and then you yes. get married in a connect group season. That's the craziest story Listen. I've ever heard. But yeah, join a connect group. Or maybe you're interested in leading a connect group for next season. That same link, zoechurch.org slash connect groups. You can sign up to lead for next season as well. And I know Pastor Chad already talked about it, but Zoe Bible School Amazing. is on Wednesday. It's on Wednesday. Yes. It's at 7.30 p.m. at the Ministry Center. As Nate said before, come a little early, mingle before, grab a coffee. It's going to be amazing. We're going to hear from Pastor Chad on Wednesday night, CBS, 7.30. You don't want to miss it. That's right. And hey, we just want to say this. If you said yes to Jesus or you decided to commit your life to God even a little bit even a little bit more, head over to Zoe Church, uh, sorry, zoechurch.org <laughs> slash devoted to kind of find your next steps in your faith, a Bible reading plan, how you should read your Bible, how to pray, all sorts of different resources, or zoechurch.org slash get involved to find out your next step here at Zoe. But we're so thankful, and uh, we can't wait to see you on Wednesday in the Connect Group or next Sunday right here. We love you so much, Zoe. We'll see you there.